Please be seated. I'm George Benson, president of the College of Charleston. Welcome to the Cistern Yard and to one of the most unique commencement ceremonies in the nation. I'm particularly pleased to welcome the many family members, friends, and guests uh, who are here today to celebrate the accomplishments of these terrific students. Can you see back there? As you all know, the College of Charleston has a very deep, rich history. It was founded in 1770 by a group of men. Three included future signers of the Declaration of Independence, three future signers of the U.S. Constitution as well. We've been educating students on these hallowed grounds since 1785. We begin our program today with the National Anthem, and by the way, the National Anthem wasn't a part of this ceremony in the early years. In fact, it wasn't even composed until 1812. It will be sung by Michael Johnson, a senior music major. Michael? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the Nice, Michael. Thank you. This is a very special day for you, no question about that. Uh, one I'm sure you'll never forget, but you need to know that your graduation is also very special for me. We literally were freshmen together. You in the classroom, me in the president's office right back there. These last four years have truly been remarkable. We've seen our nation's economy take a very serious nosedive, hit rock bottom, and begin to painfully claw its way back to the surface again. Right now, we are finally starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel, starting to feel better about the job. Your job prospects are much better this year than they were the year before, and the year before that was absolutely awful. So you're coming out at a better time. We've witnessed a historic election of our nation's first African-American president. I mean, what a remarkable event that was. Remember the excitement that we had on campus with the visits during the campaign of John McCain, Ron Paul, John Edwards, and Barack Obama. Those were very heady days, very exciting. Uh, even more exciting than that, how about January of last year, when our basketball team knocked off national champion North Carolina? Yeah, the team lit it up again in the Carolina First Arena this year, winning the Southern Conference regular season championship, and we're all very proud of that. Go Cougs! We've raised the college's national profile, and last summer, 
Uh, the college was recognized by Parade Magazine as one of the top seven small state universities in the country. We've added several new academic programs, including a major in international studies, a major in women's and gender studies, a major in computing in the arts, a master's degree in environmental studies that includes service in the Peace Corps. And after a two decade long, literally two decade long quest, an MBA program for our business school and for the business community of South Carolina. We've received extraordinary gifts from alumni, from friends, and from your parents. And I particularly want to thank the parents for your generosity. Not only have you paid their way here, you've also given us gifts along the way, and we thank you for that. Since the college began strengthening and emphasizing private fundraising about three years ago, we have seen giving increase by more than 27 percent despite the Great Recession, and that's quite remarkable, and we thank you again for helping with that. We've watched magnificent new academic and student life facilities rise from the ground here on the historic campus. We closed the old Craig Cafeteria, if you might remember your first dining hall right across the street here, and replaced it with a new Liberty Street Fresh Food Company. Our residence life offerings were upgraded and modernized by the addition of the George Street apartment complex over here and the Liberty Street Residence Hall. The new sciences and mathematics building opened a little over a year ago and you and your professors turned it into a hub of intellectual curiosity and scientific discovery literally overnight. The completion of the Cato Center for the Arts expanded the teaching, the performance, and the studio space for the School of the Arts you made this building, building literally come alive with your photography, your paintings, your music, and your dance. If you get an opportunity to tour that building when school is in session, you will certainly enjoy it. We also witnessed the restoration of the heart and soul of our campus. That is right where we're standing and sitting. Randolph Hall, Toll Library, Porter's Lodge, the entire cistern uh, uh, yard has been restored, and we are very proud of what, how it ended up. What we have here before us, ladies and gentlemen, are literally national treasures. And we have also had some fun along the way. I know you have, I have too. From a Charleston affair a couple weeks ago or so. Right here, dancing on this stage. You're going to be back next year, and the year after, and the year after that, and the year after that. And we're going to work hard to try to get something in the fall also, so you can come back in the fall as well. How about the Jason Mraz concert in the Carolina First Arena? First big concert over there. You were part of that. The raves at Addlestone Library. These raves continue, continue to be popular on YouTube. In fact, between the ceremonies today, I went home and got on YouTube and looked at one of them again. Over the past four years, you have done us all proud with your community involvement and your service learning projects, your student organizations, clubs, fraternities, sororities. You've logged countless hours cleaning up the low country waterways, raising money for charity, and participating in wildly successful literacy initiative in the local public schools. Your signature annual fundraising initiative, the Dance Marathon, has raised over $260,000 for sick children and their families since the event began. And when did it begin? Your freshman year. Well done. <laughs> Together, we also developed a strategic plan, a, a, a blueprint, if you will, that will guide the College of Charleston through the year 2020. Our new plan charts an ambitious and exciting future that, for the college one that we hope will make you proud and one that we hope will keep you engaged as alumni over the years. As you return to the college in the years ahead, you will see an even stronger liberal arts and sciences core at this university. You see expanded graduate programs, and some of those graduate programs will be located overseas. You will see Dixie Plantation, and what a spectacular facility Dixie Plantation is. I hope sometime every single one of you gets a chance to tour this property. About 17 miles out the Stono River, about 900 acres, Beautiful, pristine property that belongs to the college. Dixie Plantation, you will see, become a leading center for environmental sciences, research, and education. And, and, and speaking of the environment and environmental sciences, my generation, I think, really missed the opportunity 
to reduce our dependency on oil and to protect our environment. But I truly believe, after speaking with so many of you over the last four years, that your generation is going to get it done. So we're counting on you to do that. You will see the college increasingly differentiated from other universities around the country and around the world by its innovative academic programs that are tied to the assets of Charleston, tied to the history, the traditions, the culture, the environment of Charleston in the low country. And you will see the emergence of a new philanthropic culture at the college. We are currently preparing for a national comprehensive fundraising campaign that will help us become one of the nation's leading liberal arts and sciences universities. But to achieve this envisioned future, we will need your help, and we're going to need your help big time in a number of different ways. In a few minutes, you will become alumni of this historic university. You will join a network of nearly 50,000 alumni around the world, a network, a network that I know you will benefit from throughout your careers, and I hope you will aggressively get involved with that network, get to know those people, reach out to them. They will help you. But just as you needed us to reach the gateway to your career, we do need you to help us reach the full potential of the College of Charleston. We need your expertise. We need your advice. We need your feedback. We need your help as advocates for the college and recruiting new students and strengthening our relationships with the many institutions you will work in during your career and the communities you will live in during your career. We want to be connected to all of them, and you can help us with that. We need your help in continuing to build a vibrant and responsive alumni network. And yes, we will need your financial support. You will be hearing that from me and my successors oh, two or three times a year for the rest of your lives. Ladies and gentlemen, for the conferring of honorary degrees, I will now be joined by Board of Trustees Chair Greg Padgett and Wood Trustees Demetria Clemens and Frank Gadsden and Sylvia Harvey. Please escort Tony Meyer to the lectern. Tony Meyer will be presented for an honorary degree by Executive Vice President Steve Osborne. He's been referred to as a campus icon, a college legend, and an institution within an institution. Call him what you will, but Tony Meyer prefers to be known first and foremost as an educator. After graduating from the college in 1949, he worked as a high school coach and teacher right here in Charleston. Within a few years after service as a Marine in the Korean War, he was coaching at the college. Then he was teaching physical education and health education in the classroom. In the 1970s, his responsibilities broadened. Mr. Meyer became the college's athletics director, executive secretary of the Alumni Association, and vice president of alumni and college relations. No matter the job, he always gave it his all, convinced that the college provided a premier educational experience. Even now, five decades after he started working at the college and 62 years after graduating, Mr. Meyer still comes to work each morning in his office in the Blacklock House on Bull Street, doing his part to advance the College of Charleston. As if his decades of service weren't enough, he has declared in his will that a portion of his estate will go to the college to pay for student scholarships. In other words, Mr. Meyer's support will always be felt on campus. Mr. Meyer has been a friend to generations of students, faculty, and staff at the college and shows no signs of stopping. The College of Charleston community is fortunate to have benefited from his tremendous spirit, passion, and enthusiasm. It is my pleasure to present Anthony J. Meyer. His incredible energy and unrivaled passion for learning and teaching are remarkable attributes. He is a fitting candidate for the college's Doctor of Humane Letters. Anthony J. Meyer, you have constantly championed the power of education and have offered lifelong friendship and service to the college. 
Your zest for life and learning is an enviable asset. The College of Charleston is proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the College of Charleston, I now confer on Anthony J. Meyer the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights and privileges thereto appertain. Congratulations, Dr. Meyer. Well deserved, well deserved. Yeah. Trustees John Bush and Jeff Shills, would you please escort our commencement speaker, Dr. Richard Besser, to the lectern. Dr. Besser will be presented for an honorary degree by Chair Greg Padgett. When it comes to doctors, there are some traits we wish every physician would have in good supply. We want our doctors to be attentive, smart, and reassuring. We want them to be candid and knowledgeable. And when things aren't going well, we want them to be calm and in control. Fortunately for all of us, during the last two decades, we have Dr. Richard Besser keeping an eye on public health. It seems Dr. Besser is a man who feels most comfortable during a crisis, steadfastly seeking answers to vexing mysterious public health problems. Among his first trials was an outbreak of E. coli in Massachusetts in 1991 when he worked for the Epidemic Intelligence Service at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. After a detailed investigation, Dr. Besser determined a batch of unpasteurized apple cider was responsible for the outbreak. It was superb detective work as that pathogen had never been identified in cider before. But Dr. Besser made another more valuable discovery during his time in Boston, his future wife, Jenny. As he says, I am probably the only epidemic intelligence service officer to go out on an outbreak and come back with a spouse. <laughs> After Boston, Dr. Besser worked for five years on the faculty of the University of California, San Diego as a pediatric residency director. In 1998, he returned to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, serving in a number of positions, including director of the Coordinating Office for Terrorism Preparedness and Emergency Response. He was in that job for a mere two hours before Hurricane Katrina slammed into the Gulf Coast in 2005. It was another time he performed commendably during a time of crisis. Four years later, Dr. Besser worked as the acting director for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and coordinated the center's response to the H1N1 influenza outbreak. In that role, he won acclaim for the reassuring yet realistic manner in which he conveyed information about the swine flu at press conferences. After leaving the CDC in 2009, Dr. Besser joined ABC News, where he has reported on public health crisis following natural disasters in Haiti and Japan, as well as domestic health concerns, including the connection between drugs used for osteoporosis and femur fractures, as well as the overmarketing of umbilical stem cell banking. Through it all, no matter how small or large his audience, Dr. Besser has sought to be honest, comprehensive, and forthright. As one Washington Post reporter observed after his leadership during the swine flu epidemic, he is a scientist who has mastered the healer's delicate art of simultaneously projecting deep concern and profound calm, telling national audiences to worry, but not to worry. It is my pleasure to present Richard Eric Besser, his unique ability to effectively present complicated yet critical information regarding personal and public health makes him a fitting candidate for the college's Doctor of Humane Letters. Richard Eric Besser, your commitment to the health of the world's people is worthy of our utmost admiration and respect. 
and College of Charleston is proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the College of Charleston, I now confer on Dr. Richard Eric Besser the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters with all the rights and privileges thereto appertain. Congratulations, Dr. Besser. Rich, let's go. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, who you've just been introduced to. Dr. Richard Besser grew up in Princeton, New Jersey. He earned a bachelor's degree in economics from Williams College in Massachusetts, a medical degree from the University of Pennsylvania, and completed his residency in pediatrics at Johns Hopkins University Hospital. He lives in Montclair, New Jersey with his wife, Jeannie, who has authored uh, several cookbooks and is a food writer for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. They have two sons, Alex and Jack. Please join me in welcoming our commencement speaker, Dr. Richard Besser. Well, th thank you very much, President Benson, uh, for the honor of being the commencement speaker and also the uh, great honor of the, uh, of the honorary degree. Uh, I also want to uh, thank my nephew, Jackson Hoberman, who is in the uh, fantastic class of 2011 uh, for suggesting me to the committee and, and uh, making it possible for me uh, to come here today. Uh, at ABC News, I'm in the business of, of telling stories. So what I want to do this afternoon is, is tell you some stories. Uh, but given that it's a graduation ceremony, I, I also want to give you some advice. Uh, one piece of advice I got from a good friend of mine who's a retired uh, Army colonel is this. Give the bottom line up front. Tell people at the beginning the takeaway message. Um, that way, if you zone off, you don't hear anything else I say, you'll at least come away with my advice, and I'll feel like I, I did my job. Um, you can't do that with a joke. You can't start with a punchline. And, and if I was telling you a murder mystery, I wouldn't want to tell you who did it at the beginning. But I, I do want to start off with the advice, and then you can listen or, or not. Uh, so here it is. Pursue your dreams. If you're lucky enough to have something that you're passionate about, go for it. Follow that passion wherever it takes you. Don't lose track of it. And when you're faced with a new challenge, however big that challenge is, go for that challenge. The bigger, the better. If you do that, you're going to be happy. And by following your passion, you're going to make the world a better place. That's it. OK. If you don't hear the rest of what I have to say, that was the advice and that was the takeaway message. But now I want to get on to stories, uh, because that's what I really like to do. Uh, about eight weeks ago, I was sitting on the ground outside this, this wood and thatch hut in Burkina Faso, which is a, a small country in sub-Saharan Africa. And I was sitting there with this mother, this young mother and these two young children, and we were eating sweet potato fries. And our cameraman was trying to zoom in on these children's faces to see how they would react to these fries. And while I'm watching this, a smile broke out on my face, and I almost started to laugh. I, I just couldn't believe where I was. And I thought to myself, you know, life doesn't get much better than this. So how did I end up there in that situation? It was 115 degrees out. The wind was blowing, this dry wind. Why was I so happy about that situation? Well. I can tell you that as a little kid, I never dreamt of growing up to be a TV doc. That, that wasn't something I, I thought I wanted to do or had even considered. 30 years ago this month, I was sitting where you are. I was at my graduation from college. And you know, I was, I was filled with different emotions. I don't remember a single word the graduation speaker said. In fact, it took me a while to even remember who the graduation speaker was. My mind was elsewhere. I was, I, was, I was thinking about all of the people that I had to say goodbye to. I was thinking about getting out of there and going and celebrating with my family and friends. And I was full of excitement about what life was going to have in store for me once I finished college. What was next for me? My goals were simple, and they were really, really big. I wanted to change the world. 
Now, I didn't say that very often. You know, when people say, well, what do you want to do after college? I didn't just say, well, I want to change the world. Uh, I guess I didn't want anyone to tell me I was idealistic or I wasn't serious enough or I didn't understand what I really wanted to do. You know, I was going to go to medical school and I, I knew I wanted to do that and I wanted to tackle some of the world's big health problems, some of the inequities that I saw. But I didn't want to go to medical school right away. I was very tired of being in classrooms, tired of having to complete assignments. I wanted to get out and I wanted to explore the world. So I deferred my admission to medical school. I got a job as a bartender. I earned some money. And then I bought a ticket, a one-year ticket around the world. And I set off to see what was out there. Very little in my life has challenged me as much as that one year I spent around the world. Very little has taught me as much about myself, about other cultures, about how to listen to people, and how to overcome challenges. You know, riding trains across India, I can still remember it, being crammed into these second-class carriages, soaking in all the sounds and the colors and the smells of, of another culture, trying to communicate, deciding every day, waking up and trying to figure out where I wanted to go next, what I wanted to do. It was absolutely life-changing. It taught me that the world was accessible, that I could go anywhere and I could make it. I could figure it out. I didn't need to speak the language. I could make my way. So I came back to medical school confident about my ability to take on challenges. But my biggest fear was that medical school was going to drum that out of me, that I was going to lose my goal, my passion for what I wanted to do with my life. And at times, the lectures just seemed irrelevant with what I really wanted to do. Uh, and at other times, I was so fascinated by what I was learning that I thought I might get sidetracked into a different area. So I worked my schedule during medical school so that the last five months of my training, I could spend overseas in a developing country trying to reconnect with what was important to me. There, I was able to refocus. I found the perfect spot. It was a place called Lady Willingdon Hospital in Manali. Manali is in northwest India. It's right on the border of Tibet. It's in the middle of the Himalayan mountains. It's the most beautiful place I've ever been. And there, you know, I learned about health problems people face all over the globe. I was able to reconnect with that drive of what got me excited. And it challenged me in ways I'd never been challenged before. I was working with this doctor, his name was Laji, and he was the most phenomenal surgeon. Uh, I would spend hours, you know, 14 hours a day with him in the operating room. Each day I'd assist him. I would, I would administer anesthesia. We would just pour ether onto a little cloth mask. Uh, I'd hold instruments. I'd help close wounds and, and, and do, do suturing with him. Often the power would go out, and I'd have to hold a flashlight so that he could see to finish the surgery. Well, as my time there was ending, Laji had to go away from Manali for, for a week to attend a meeting. And he said, Rich, you've been here for almost five months. You're in charge of the hospital. So here I was, a, a fourth year medical student, in charge of a, a hospital that was seeing about 200 outpatients a day. And he said, you know, you don't need to do any surgery. That, that will put off. Uh, but you do need to do the, the outpatient work. But there's one operation that you know, I don't think you'll have to do it, but you need to be prepared. And that's a cesarean section. So a C-section is, is a, a means of delivering a baby who's ha who you're unable to deliver vaginally. There's problems, and the baby's not, not coming through. And so when that happens, it's a true surgical emergency. You have to be able to act quickly. So before he left, he was very patient, and he walked me through this procedure, showed me how to do it, and then he took off. Well. Here we are, we're five hours away from the next nearest facility, and a woman comes in, she's in labor. Jane, who is our head nurse, examines her and says, you know, she's exhausted, she's been, she's been trying to deliver for over 24 hours, she's not gonna make it, the baby's in trouble. I listened to the woman's belly and the baby didn't sound good. She said, you need to do a C-section. So I said, okay. You know, Laji showed me how to do one of those. So <laughs> I get the, uh, you know, start to get the operating room ready, and while I'm in there, the church in the middle of the compound fills up with people starting to pray. The operating room, people start coming in and they start to pray. I put her in position on her side. We have some prayers and I begin. And within a few minutes, I deliver this incredibly beautiful little girl. She's a little blue, uh, but a few minutes on the warming table and she perks right up and she lets out a cry as do most of the people who were in the, the operating room at that time. Um, it was the most incredible feeling. I closed up, took the mother and, and the baby to the maternity ward and, and, and moved on. 
the feeling of doing that C-section was, was incredible. I'm not an athlete, so I've never experienced that feeling of getting the hit to win a baseball game. But it, it, it struck me that it had to be that kind of a feeling. It was the first operation that I ever did on my own, and it was the last. But it gave me the confidence to be willing to take on any challenge that came my way. You know, the point I want to make is that throughout your lives, you're going to face challenges, and you're going to have choices. Some of these challenges are going to be of your own making, and some are challenges that, that come to you. I've always tried to look at each challenge as an opportunity. What can I learn here? What doors might this open for me? How might it allow me to pursue my dreams and my passions? So I got to get back to the sweet potato. So how did I end up in the hot sun of Burkina Faso eating sweet potato fries? I, I want to finish that story. I was serving as the acting director at the CDC in Atlanta, and, and the pandemic hit in 2009. And I became the face of the response. And ABC News saw me, and they liked the way I was on the air, and they offered me a job. And of all the job opportunities I had coming out of CDC, this was the job that was most outside of my comfort zone. It was the thing that I thought would challenge me the most, but it was also that thing that I thought might be able to have the biggest impact on people's health. So I, I went to ABC. And at ABC, I was able to work with them, and we got money from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to cover global health. And they gave us this money for one year to go out and tell stories about global health problems. So two months ago, I went to Africa to, to shoot some stories. And this story about the sweet potato was one of them. Let me explain it to you. One of the leading causes of preventable blindness is vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin A you get from orange fruits and vegetables, like a sweet potato. Well, the sweet potato in Sub-Saharan Africa is white. It doesn't have any vitamin A in it. And so the Helen Keller Foundation found a way to, to, to crossbreed the American sweet potato and the African sweet potato. And the woman that I was sitting with there on the ground outside this hut was one of the leaders in that area in teaching people how to introduce the sweet potato and how to prevent vitamin A deficiency. So we were sitting there eating these sweet potato fries, which were delicious. And something about the simplicity of the solution made me so smile. And something about the situation made me want to laugh. Here I was practicing global public health in front of a camera, something I never imagined when I was graduating college. So to close, find your passion, whatever that passion is. Don't be afraid of the challenges, because you never know what doors those challenges will open. And if you can find your passion and follow your dreams, you're going to be happy, and you're going to make the world a better place, whatever you do. So thank you very much for this, uh, for this opportunity, and congratulations to the class of 2011. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Besser, and thank you for the words of advice and the inspirational words. Provost Hine will announce the William Aiken Fellows, the 4.0 graduates, and the Bishop Robert Smith Award recipients. George. I think there's another message here. Eat your vegetables. As provost, it is really my opportunity to represent the outstanding faculty we have here at the College of Charleston, and to them, I salute. We're very pleased today to recognize our second graduating class of William Aiken Fellows. If the graduating Aiken Fellows could please rise. We have a few scattered back here. These students are the ones bearing medals hanging from gold and maroon ribbons. These students are all members of the Honors College, were selected to be the Aiken Fellow be in the Aiken Fellow Society based on superior academic performance. As Aiken Fellows, they've participated in a range of activities aimed at their development as scholars and professionals in their fields of choice. All are graduating magna cum laude. Of the 12, five have studied abroad, four have completed internships outside of Charleston, Two have been accepted into PhD programs. Six have been accepted to master's programs. One is going into the Peace Corps. 
One is our first Fulbright Scholar. One is a Lionel Pearson Scholar. Three have had work presented at national conferences, and three have produced theatrical performances. At this afternoon's ceremony, we have two perfect 4.0 GPA graduates. Would each of you please stand as I call your name? Stephanie Marie Carey in computer science. <laughs> and Stephen Edward Hamel in accounting. Congratulations to you both. <laughs> the Bishop Robert Smith Award is the highest honor a student can achieve during their career here at the College of Charleston. The recipients of this award are chosen on the basis of demonstrated leadership and academic excellence. I'm pleased to announce that at a recent ceremony, the Bishop Rob Robert Smith Award was presented to Samuel Orlove from Richmond, Virginia, and Sanaz Armo from Alpharetta, Georgia, and Madison Homan from Winchester, Kentucky. Madison and Samuel are attending this ceremony, and Sanaz attended the morning ceremony today. Madison is graduating with a major in mathematics, and Samuel is graduating with a major in business administration. Each receives a plaque, a medallion, and a $500 check. We're very proud of you. I would also like to introduce the students in the platform party today. We have Isaiah Nelson, President of the Student Government Association, and Jackson Hoberman, President of the Senior Class. Jackson will make remarks on behalf of the Senior Class, and he will be followed by Isaiah Nelson uh, with remarks on behalf of the student body. President Benson, Board of Trustees, distinguished faculty, administration, and staff. And of course, the reason we are all here today, the graduating class of 2011. I don't want anyone to think that I forgot, but I'd also like to welcome all of the parents and family members sitting in the audience today. You all must be so proud. Nearly four years ago at Convocation, we converged to the gates of Porter's Lodge at the south end of this same yard. With high hopes and lofty ambitions, we assembled for the first time as a class, each of us hankering with anticipation for our forthcoming undergraduate years. We had beaten the senioritis of our final year of high school, and we were looking forward to our time at the College of Knowledge. Yet, just as we arrived together in the late summer of 2007, Today, we will depart with the same unsettled excitement for the lives we are about to commence. We now begin to realize the hopes and dreams made possible by our education at the College of Charleston. During our time here, the forces of these hollowed campus grounds have left us forever changed. We have been humbled by our first failures of emerging adulthood. We have learned to admit that we do not know all of the answers. Our time at the college has been a process one through which each of us has come to realize one of the most important facts of life. Our parents sure seem a lot wiser than we have given them credit for over the years. Thank you parents for putting up with our adolescent shenanigans. Though our time on campus may have felt short, you don't have to look very far to see the face of a friend you met here at CFC. From a place you didn't even know existed, who has stood with you through the trials of the last four years, and who has positively impacted the person who you are today. From where I am standing, I am looking out at a crowd of those faces. Wherever we're destined post-graduation, our memories created at the college will continue long after the ceremony has passed. For we are not saying goodbye. Rather, the relationships we have cultivated over the years will only continue to flourish, a result of the indelible impression the college has left on each of us. In our experience, if our experience a few weeks ago at a Charleston affair was any indication of what the future may hold, we will attend each other's weddings, celebrate the births of each other's children, 
and help each other with the ebbs, flows, and meanderings that make up a life. Class of 2011, savor these last moments, but always look to tomorrow with new inspiration. Our time has come to venture beyond, excuse me, our time has come to venture back through Porter's Lodge. Let's move beyond the cistern yard. It's time to make our mark on the world. Congratulations and best of luck. Thanks. All right, well faculty, staff, administrators, community members, and most importantly, the class of 2011. Welcome to the Cistern Yard, and I would be remiss, just like Jackson uh, pointed out, to thank the parents in attendance, the parents and family members here. You've taken our phone calls when we were sad here at the College of Charleston. You've helped us move into our residence halls, and you've been there for us for the four or five or possibly six years that we were students here at the college. And I thank you on behalf of everyone on this stage for all that you've given to us. So as, as we look uh, to pass through Porter's Lodge today for the last time as students at the College of Charleston, I felt that it would be fitting to look back to the very founding of our university to provide us guidance as we move into the real world. As many of you know, and as President Benson pointed out, six of the college's founders were either signers of the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution, three respectively of each. Our first president, Bishop Robert Smith, was an American soldier during the Revolutionary War, fighting for the freedom and liberty that we all enjoy today. Even Robert Mills, who was the architect of the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., and is widely considered to be the first American architect, studied here in the early 19th century. Our college has produced men and women throughout our history that have changed our nation and our world. And among all of these people, there is a common bond that unites them. Their determination to fight for what they believed and their resolve to leave their world in a better place. They didn't take the path that was most traveled on. They created their own path and led others down it. So as you graduate today, I encourage you to look back to the example laid out by the founders of our country and our college as you blaze your own trail in life. As graduates of this amazing university, we have an opportunity to leave a mark in our communities and better the world that you all are inheriting today. So I urge you not to pass up this opportunity to work towards those ideals that you hold true and just as the countless other graduates of the College of Charleston have done throughout our history. Thank you and congratulations. Jackson, Isaiah, thank you so much. Now I would like to introduce Margaret Frierson, class of 1985, who will speak to you on behalf of the Alumni Association. Thank you. It is a real honor for me today to take part in your graduation. As president of the Alumni Association, I welcome you as our newest members. At the end of today's ceremony, you will join the more than 46,000 alumni of the College of Charleston. You will be a member of an alumni association that was founded in, 19, excuse me, in 1888 and exists to promote the welfare of the College of Charleston. As you get ready to start this new phase of your life, I'd like to share a few thoughts with you as someone who was sitting there on the cistern just 26 years ago. First, Make the most of the education you've received here. You are well prepared for whatever path you may take. Secondly, the friends you made here will be some of the best friends you will ever have. Stay connected with each other and with your college. Come back for a Charleston Affair every year. Get involved. We have 26 alumni chapters throughout the United States, and we are adding more every day. If you move to a city where we have a chapter, get involved. If you find yourself in a city where there is no chapter, start one. We will support you. Give back. Your class president, Jackson Hoberman, spoke at our annual meeting on April 16th. 
He told us of your remarkable class gift. I must tell you, everyone in the room was very much impressed. Keep up that philanthropic spirit after graduation because it is our duty to give back to our alma mater and make sure those who come after us enjoy the same wonderful experiences we did. There is a tradition at the college involving our class ring. Before graduation, students wear the ring with the seal facing in. But at graduation, the ring is turned so that the seal faces outward. This indicates that you are now alumni of the College of Charleston and are ready to go out into the world. Good luck to all of you, and remember your association is here for you. Thank you. Now for the reason we are here today, the awarding of the degrees. First, the Artium Baccalaureatus degrees will be awarded, the AB degree. The AB degree in Classics requires significant coursework in both Greek and Latin. Other AB majors require significant coursework in Greek or Latin. The College of Charleston has awarded this degree for more than two centuries, and that grand tradition continues today. Will the following candidates please rise? Catherine Page Anderson, biology major. Anne Gregory Kelly, biology major. And Patricia Joanne Chanto, biology. I would like to ask those on the stage, the students remain standing, but those on the stage, if you would remain seated in order the audience be able to see our candidates. However, it is a tradition for the audience in the cistern yard to be on their feet during the awarding of this degree. Please stand. Kura Toribut. Are we still there? Oh, yeah. Let's try it again. Kura Toribus, Octoratatum, Tribu Aintibus, Hones, Uenes, Inhumaniorabus, Literis, Plecare, Ereditus, Ad Gradum, Artium, Baccalaureatus, Admisi. Congratulations. You may be seated. Next, joining me in awarding the degrees will be Chair Greg Padgett, Provost George Hind, and Executive Vice President Victor Wilson. Professors Susan Catwinkle from the Theater Department and Jeanette Gwynn from the Arts Management Department will announce the names and majors of our graduates. Upon successful completion of all degree requirements and with the recommendation of the faculty and the deans, I have the honor to present the bachelor's degree candidates of 2011. Working. Assisting with the graduates from the School of Business will be Associate Dean Kent Gordine representing the school. For the bachelor's degree in accounting, joining us will be Professor William Kaprowski, Chair of the Department. Taylor Lee Chabot. Evan Joseph Cummings also meets the requirements for business administration. Kevin James Earl also meets the requirements for business administration. Lindsay Lee Douglas Jingras also meets the requirements for business administration. Preston William Glover. Jordan Michelle Hickey. Zachary Martin Stephen Hill, magna cum laude. Lewis Carey Height, Kristen Elizabeth Krawchuk, Matthew William Leeds, summa cum laude, 
Kate McDowell Madden, cum laude. Courtney D. Martin. Sarah Elizabeth McElwain. Also meets the requirements for the Honors College, magna cum laude. Honors College certificates were awarded by Dean John Newell at a separate ceremony. Teresa Ann Mesco. Also meets the requirements for business administration. Patrick Joseph Odom. Colin Randall O'Neill. Joshua Henry Owen, magna cum laude. Gregana Nikolaeva Pencheva. Andrew Hayden Raleigh. Faye Elizabeth Rossi. Ethan Jariah Rutland, also meets the requirements for business administration. Samantha Carlene Sen. Marla Abby Shore, cum laude. Morgan Emily Smith, also meets the requirements for business administration. Thomas Joseph Tavano. Morris Homer Taylor III, also meets the requirements for business administration, cum laude. Alexander Martin Tenhove. John P. Versprill, also meets the requirements for business administration. Daniel Ivan Walters, cum laude. Mary Catherine Williams. Catherine Evans Williamson, also meets the requirements for Spanish, summa cum laude. Michael Patrick Withrow, cum laude. Evan Matthew Potter Witten. Glenn V. Eula. For the bachelor's degree in business administration, joining us will be Professor Thomas Kent, chair of the department. Alexandra Ada. Cole Alsop. Jane McReynolds Arnold. Jonathan Hugh Bachman. Elizabeth Renee Baker. Cameron Lee Ballinger. Allison Page Barbiero, summa cum laude. Stephen Nelson Barbano. Kyle Bradley Barnell. Elena Aurora Barrio, also meets the requirements for hospitality and tourism management. Kevin Matthew Berenger. Wade Austin Barreth. Brianna Lynn Berry. Charlotte Hutz Betcher. David S. Spetz. Michael Gregory Block. Alicia Shante Bowie. Lacey Page Bowers. Anna Caroline Branscombe. Jeffrey William Brunsbach. Ashton Gray Brownlee. Daniel Tyler Bundrick. Kristen Marie Burghardt, cum laude. Sequisha Burton. Donald Farrell Burton. Brian Lee Kane. Kristen Renee Capasso. Michael Andrew Carey Jr. Kinsey Olivia Casey also meets the requirements for hospitality and tourism management. Anna Corby Siapa. Robert Dunn Clark, cum laude. Thomas Ralph Conlon. Stephanie Drew Cook. Bobby Eugene Crouch III. William Brandon Cupstead. James Datanak. Sally Lamb Daljum. Clarence Thomas Dale III. Ryan Christopher Daniels. Brianna Nicole Davey. Jason H. Davis. Andrew John Dean. Amanda Lynn Deaton. Mary Elizabeth Devine. Davis Marie DeBose. Jeffrey Allen Delaney. Marion Dvorak. Christopher A. Edwards. Robert William Farish. K. 
Casey Nicole Falling, cum laude. Julia Marie Felth, magna cum laude. Jacob Arthur Field. Corey Tyler Figueroa. John Barnwell Fishburn. Andrew Isaac Fleetwood. Jessica Lynn Fletcher, also meets requirements for economics. Sloan Elizabeth Foley. Rory Philip Forrest, cum laude. Michael Cameron Foster. Quinn Patrick Foster. Kayla Nicole France. Colin M. Freeman. William Thomas Freeman, Jr. Jennifer Claire Fuller. Sydney Lauren Gallimore, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Jan Marie Gambardella. Julie Marie Gates. Lindsay Renee Gentry. Luke Joseph Gilbert. Katrin Melissa Gilrain. Thomas Morgan Glasgow. Kayla Suzanne Glasscock, also meets requirements for economics and the Honors College, cum laude. Laura Elizabeth Grady. Michael Hampton Graham, Jr. Kevin Curtis Gray II. Ryan Philip Greenbaum. Karen Elizabeth Greer, also meets the requirements for the Honors College, magna cum laude. Elizabeth Ann Griffith. Zachary Levi Rossi Grimes. Emily Ruth Hall. George Edward Hamburger. Lonnie Hanlon. Stephanie May Harris also meets requirements for the Honors College, magna cum laude. Emma Heyman. Andrew Tyler Headley. Logan Robert Hearn. Rachel Alexandra Hendrick. Jennifer Ann Hepp also meets requirements for hospitality and tourism management, cum laude. Andrew Gregory Hill. Matthew Winfield Hill. Jackson William Hoberman. Mabry Anna Hodges. William Staley Jeffrey. Sarah Elizabeth Jensen. Robert Adam Jarosko. Diana Helen Johnson also meets requirements for the Honors College, magna cum laude. Paige Alexandra Johnson. Kyle Livingston Jones. Holly Lauren Casper. Whitney Rochelle Kendrick. Sam Kernodal. Megan Elizabeth King. Stephen Michael King. Caitlin Elizabeth Kristen. Amanda Kristen Lacurdo, cum laude. Shannon Elizabeth Lado. George Nairn Landrum. Patrick George Latcham. Daniel Lauren. William D. Laws. Dustin Lawrence Mari, cum laude. Megan Ruth Lebove also meets requirements for hospitality and tourism management. Marshall Frank Leinberger. Timothy Wilson Logan, Jr. Stephen Ryan Maynard. Richard James McBride, cum laude. Matthew Craig McCarris. John Carter McFerrin. Mark James McGill. Katrina Ann Meads. Jesse Mesa. Taylor Ryan Milana. 
Miranda Carol Milburn. Amy Ellen Mixon. Edward Joseph Monks III. Nicholas Jordan Levine, cum laude. Kevin Francis Murphy. Austin Dargan Newman. Kathleen Brett Nutatis. Matthew Lawrence Ogden. Samuel Gannon Orlo, magna cum laude. Casey Ryan O'Shea. Michael Shutian Oyang. Taylor Brian Pack. Carlos Duardo Palomo Siliesa. Austin McLean Parks. Kinjin Vishnuabe Patel. Christopher George Pecora. Graham Swenson Funder. Nevin Earl Phillips also meets requirements for the Honors College. John William Placco. Megan Elizabeth Przejetski also meets the requirements for hospitality and tourism management. Jack Talbot Quinn. <laughs> Alyssa Lorraine Ragland. Mark J. Renna. Alexandra Caitlin Rogers, cum laude. <laughs> Catherine Kirsten Reed. Lauren Renee Rogers. Joshua Thomas Robick. Stephen Mark Shapiro, Sarah Grace Marie Schlecht, Jordan Catherine Schmidt, John Winfield Seeger, Callie Kathleen Seneff, also meets requirements for hospitality and tourism management. Darren Lee Shrum, also meets requirements for hospitality and tourism management. Brittany Mills Small, Brad Allen Smith, Catherine Solorsano. Alyssa Lauren Sommer. Heather Michelle Sosby. Eliza Anderson Staley. Elizabeth Stark. Justin Allen Strauss. James Robert Strickland. Christopher Moore Swada. William Christopher Thomas. Crystal Marie Trelfel, Carter Lewis Thronberg, Joseph Chalmers Toland, James Donald Walker, cum laude, Randy Eaton Weathers, cum laude, David Lawrence Weber, cum laude. David Michael Weckesser. David Williams Wedgworth. Alessandra Wendruff. Brandon James Wheel. Teresa Christine Cycle Williams. Erica Elizabeth Wilson. Elizabeth Laney Wood. Christy Lynn Woodall, magna cum laude. Fabian Howard Wright also meets requirements for psychology. John Parker Wright. Anna Elizabeth Zabenhausen. Mary Elizabeth Zolga, cum laude. Joshua League Zwemer. For the bachelor's degree in economics, joining us will be Professor Peter Calgano representing the department. Lee Daniel Altman also meets requirements for business administration. Nicholas Taylor Anderson, cum laude. Samantha Jean Andriano. Uriah David Avia. Kyle Todd Boggs also meets requirements for mathematics. Robert Justin Brewer. Catherine Clancy Bryant, summa cum laude. Arthur Frederick Klaus. Emily Louise Clayton also meets requirements for the Honors College, magna cum laude. 
Benedict John Paul Coffey, also meets requirements for the Honors College, cum laude. Kenzie Joshua Cook, magna cum laude. Luke Christopher Carreal. Bradley John DeVos, also meets requirements for urban studies, cum laude. Christopher Hunter Downs. Christopher William Druce. Carol John Hall. Daniel S. House. Rebecca Lee Irby, cum laude. Chelsea Ann King, also meets requirements for business administration, cum laude. Jonathan Edward Ladner. Emily Mead Lindbergh, also meets requirements for business administration and the Honors College, cum laude. George Mayer. Brian Christopher Mulhall, also meets requirements for political science, cum laude. Rupert Roland Monroe. Nicholas Martin Ogden, also meets requirements for business administration, magna cum laude. Benjamin James Pantuck, also meets requirements for business administration and the Honors College, magna cum laude. David Timothy Siemens, also meets requirements for physics. Eric Benjamin Stevenson. Gregory Edward Vincent. Elon Ziff. For the bachelor's degree in hospitality and tourism management, joining us will be Professor Steve Litvin representing the department. Alexandra Woodruff Adams also meets requirements for business administration. Sarah Kathleen Bankston also meets requirements for business administration. Emily Joanne Bergtholt. Carly Gay Bloomberg also meets requirements for business administration. Ellen Michelle Bouchard. Robert Eugene Brady also meets requirements for business administration. Emily Grace Britton also meets requirements for business administration. Lauren Ruth Brockman also meets requirements for business administration, magna cum laude. Michael Jared Bush. Pamela Morgan Chiquitas also meets requirements for business administration. Katherine M. Chapman also meets requirements for business administration, cum laude. Megan Marie Clerkin also meets requirements for business administration. Chelsea Ann Conrad. Elizabeth Ann Cody also meets requirements for business administration and the Honors College, magna cum laude. Rebecca Lynn Dempsey also meets the requirements for business administration, magna cum laude. Michael William Dion also meets the requirements for business administration. Kristen Maria Dixon also meets requirements for business administration. Blair Elizabeth Eads also meets requirements for business administration. Rachel Lee Edmondson also meets the requirements for business administration. Caroline Rutherford Ewald also meets requirements for business administration. Patrick Thomas Gallant. Jennifer Luck Gambrell also meets the requirements for business administration. Michael Zoltan Geib also meets requirements for business administration. Jeffrey Thomas Golicki also meets the requirements for business administration. Taylor Brianne Graves. Zachary Daniel Guest also meets requirements for business administration. Victoria Curran Hagen also meets requirements for business administration. Mary Catherine Hartz also meets requirements for business administration. Marissa Sarah Herrick also meets requirements for business administration. Jesse Sellers Hodges also meets requirements for business administration. Emma Caitlin Huntley also meets requirements for business administration. Megan Amanda Johnson also meets the requirements for business administration. Courtney Blair Kaufman also meets requirements for business administration. Jacqueline Marie Cora Kane also meets the requirements for business administration. Joshua Z. Lieberman also meets the requirements for business administration and geology. Crystal Ann Lynch also meets the requirements for business administration. Claire Rose McFarlane also meets the requirements for business administration. Aileen Nicole Mancini also meets the requirements for business administration. 
Victoria Rosa Mangione, also meets requirements for business administration, cum laude. Lindsay Marie Mathis. Skylar Bender McCabe, also meets requirements for business administration, cum laude. Ashley Nola Montano. Robert Edward Morris, also meets requirements for business administration. Leanne O'Dell, also meets requirements for business administration. Katherine Jennings Parker, also meets requirements for business administration. Ann Lawson Ferris, also meets requirements for business administration. Virginia Lucille Phillips, also meets requirements for business administration. Hadley Helene Finney. Jeremy Eugene Poole, also meets requirements for business administration. Kristen Michelle Rayner, also meets the requirements for business administration and the Honors College, cum laude. Carly Elizabeth Reynolds, also meets requirements for business administration. Joanne K. Richardson, also meets the requirements for business administration, cum laude. Elaine Carey Savaris. Ashley V. Smith, also meets the requirements for business administration. Sarah Elizabeth Steinard, also meets the requirements for business administration, cum laude. Ashley Elizabeth Steigman, also meets the requirements for business administration. Courtney Marie Stork. Olivia Page Taylor. Christy May Underhill, also meets the requirements for business administration. Lauren Michelle Vinciguerra. Ashlyn Caroline Wells, also meets the requirements for business administration. Gabrielle Hannah Winters, also meets requirements for business administration. Chelsea McLean Wright, also meets requirements for business administration. For the bachelor's degree in international business, joining us will be Professor Kent Gordine representing the department. Robert Allen Aguire, also meets requirements for business administration. Melody Elizabeth Andrews. Holly Nicole Ashworth. Florian Ockenthaler, cum laude. Jeffrey Michael Belinskis. Caroline Jordan Batty. Jessica Ann Bayless, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Angelique Maria Bobet. Britta Bornkessel. Michael Boyer. Patrick R. Broom, also meets requirements for Spanish, cum laude. Daniel Joseph Callahan V. Sarah Kathleen Connell, also meets requirements for French and the Honors College, cum laude. Charlotte Ann DeWitt. Alexandra Carter Doty, cum laude. Brian Michael Drennan. Tyler Frederick Edwards. Andrew Gilchrist Elliott. Brittany Nicole Foster. Preston LaFay Fant. Michael Joseph Gambrell. Joseph William Goodman, cum laude. Hilary Marie Harrison. Lydia Catherine Hendricks. Bryn Elizabeth Johnson, cum laude. Courtney Nicole Kerr. Sebastian Stephen Kreitz. Cherie Justina Kripal. Elise Lauren Lasco, also meets requirements for Spanish. Adams Christopher Lowe, cum laude. Kayla Shannon Mackey. Logan Murdoch McLennan. Alexandra McMakin. Nicole Ashley Metcalf also meets requirements for the Honors College, cum laude. Emily Caroline Mick. Yulia Petrova Milenkova. Alessandro Jorge Moriera. Edgar Lee Norris. Lee Anthony Pantesco, cum laude. Edwin Winfield Platt IV. Stephen Michael Rayner. Chad Michael Reese, magna cum laude. Robert Lee Rice. 
Robert Franklin Runkle. Mary Ann Rush, cum laude. Kevin Michael Russum. Ellen Lawrence Sandy. Kirkley Gibson Smiley. Kelly Ann Sabansky, cum laude. Brittany Marie Bailey Skradnik. Sarah Shujian Tan. Alexander James Tarr. Gentry Davis Taylor, cum laude. Catherine Elizabeth Turner. Joseph Robert Vitali. Claire Isabel Madeline Vogel. Also meets requirements for the Honors College, magna cum laude. Brandon A. Windham. Chelsea Mary Witt. Assisting with the graduates from the School of Education, Health, and Human Performance will be Dean Francis Welch. For the bachelor's degree in athletic training, joining us will be Professor Michael Flynn, Chair of the Department. Andrea Megan Burt. Lillian Irene Lofton. Also meets the requirements for physical education. Nathaniel McCartney Manzel, magna cum laude. Gina Louise Parisi. Matthew Albert Rossi, cum laude. Carrie Ann Sly, also meets requirements for physical education. For the bachelor's degree in early childhood education, joining us will be Professor Bob Perkins, representing the department. Eileen Nario Augustin. Tyler Elise Anderson. Catherine Caperton Banks, cum laude. Robin Blake. Jessica Marie Bocharski, cum laude. Chelsea Ann Caldwell. Catherine Ann Kutan, cum laude. Amy Elizabeth Clements, cum laude. Allison Marie Capola. Lily Pease Evans, magna cum laude. Jessica Davida Freeman. Jennifer Marie Gears. Megan Elizabeth Hadley. Brittany James Harrington, magna cum laude. Brooke Nicole Hyatt, magna cum laude. Shelby Alice Holbrook, cum laude. Wilhelmina Johnson. Christina Dawn Kelly. Catherine Elizabeth Kennerly. Jordan Elizabeth Kircher. Magna cum laude. Sarah Louise Lundquist. Melissa Ann Miller. McKenna Christian Mizell. Catherine Ann Neal, cum laude. Jennifer Morgan Nettles. Lauren Warren Osborne. Elizabeth Sue Parker. Jillian Jessica Paris, cum laude. Kaylin Ashley Penland. Alexis Lane Phillips. Rebecca Sutton Kiat. Laura Elizabeth Richardson. Tamika Andrea Rivenbark. Hannah Christian Ross, cum laude. Corey Alexandra Solomon, cum laude. Alexandra Caroline Snyder, cum laude. Jessica Lee Tiller, cum laude. Carlise Charnel Van. Margaret Folks Wolf.
for the bachelor's degree in elementary education, Elizabeth Lines Beasley, Jacqueline May Beasley, Kayla Marie Bivacqua, Aaron Adele Burke, Eric Lloyd Chamness, Leslie Kate Enroth, Jimmy Freeman, Logan Glover, Jazzy Marie Good, Nicole Brooke Harrison, Megan Ray Ireland, Heather Marie Kirby, Lisa Andrea Grieg, Marissa Sayer Lane, Megan Elise Matthews, Christy Somerton Medea, Christian Maria Patton, Julia Bunting Potts, magna cum laude. Mary Allison Pointer, magna cum laude. Laura Michelle Reeves. Jeremy Arcalis Rodriguez. Melissa May Rutherford, cum laude. Yasmin Rochelle Snigowski. Ryan Christine Thompson. Sarah Littleton Walcott. Megan Elizabeth Zala. For the bachelor's degree in middle grades education, Elizabeth Arlene Bell. Melanie Lynn Carter. Peter Patrick Collins, Jr. Samantha Beth Felder. Lindsay Melissa Thunderberg. <laughs> Margaret Ellen Gillette, magna cum laude, also meets requirements for history. Amy Lee Jones, magna cum laude. Eric Michelle Rooney. Eric Michael Rooney. Matthew Christopher Sanders. Thomas Christopher Savage. Zachary Philip Vasidi, Lynette Cassandra Wright. For the bachelor's degree in physical education, joining us will be Professor Michael Flynn, chair of the department. Brittany Marie Aaron. Pamela Marie Angelicus. Margaret Ann Blackwell. Kenny Lynette Bowling, Julie D. Brower, cum laude, Kendra Alyssa Berwick, Christopher Warren Campbell, Ashley Ann Conrad, Margaret Elizabeth Cooper, Clay Michael Duplantis, Carl Andrew Emmerling, Justin Fojo, cum laude, Andrew Nicholas Fortune, Meredith Renee Greif. Jacqueline Nicole Griffo, magna cum laude. Shanna Marie Hardister. Karen Elizabeth Henderson, cum laude. Mark David Herbert. James Theodore Holler, cum laude. Chelsea Lloyd Hilton. Timothy Daniel Johnson also meets requirements for secondary education. Anthony M. Jones. Kristen Lee King. Emily Mary Kenny. Jennifer Caitlin Kitchens. Samantha Nicole Kabinski, cum laude. Lace Alexandria Lane. Luke Lappin. Lutheran Ruth Lee. Catherine Ward Logan. Cum laude also meets requirements for the Honors College. Margaret Ann Ling. Hannah Elizabeth Lund. Elizabeth Joanna Mann. Megan Gormley Cormack. McCormick. Megan Gormley McCormick. Hannah Lee McCullough. Brian Joseph Monk. Jonathan Scott Murray. Jessica Lauren Nixon. Also meets requirements for secondary education. Molly Beach O'Quinn, 
cum laude, also meets requirements for secondary education. Amanda Lee Palco. Catherine Ann Pesatur. Emily Kate Richardson. Aaron Matthew Roberts. Brittany Diane Rogers. Emily Marie Ross. Haley Lauren Sayer. Jared Charles Slechta. Aaron Flynn Stoddard. Allison Lee Sturm. Morgan Ashley Tate. Jomonica Jovell Taylor. Lindsay Corden Taylor. Laura Coleman Thomas. Ellen Page Way. Brittany Morgan Williams. Adam Craig Wingard. Amanda Sterling Wynn. Kayla Suzanne Worley. Barbara Gibson Wright. For the bachelor's degree in special education, joining us will be Professor Bob Perkins, representing the department. Micah Anna Algy, cum laude. Stephanie Ray Beskin, cum laude. Jennifer Roxine Bellamy. Madison Crenshaw Bowers, cum laude. Shauna Nicole Butchkowski. Olivia Lee Cassell. Tanya Summer Doyle. Joanna Elaine Fort, cum laude. Ashley Lynn Ivey, cum laude. Virginia McLaurin Jones, cum laude. Angela Ann Calaris. Jillian Rochelle Kalick. Ashley Brooke Leitner. Jennifer Ann McDermott. Brandy Michelle Nation. Ann Finch Owens. Victoria Catherine Paldino. Brittany Leanne Rogers. Elizabeth Ashley Rumble, cum laude. Chelsea Jacqueline Smith, cum laude. Kelsey Elaine Squire. Megan Catherine Grace Tyson. Adam Waitman. Assisting with the graduates from the School of Sciences and Mathematics will be Dean Michael Arbach. For the bachelor's degree in biology, joining us will be Professor Yap Helenus, Chair of the Department. Teldon Blake Alford. Catherine Page Anderson, summa cum laude. Nancy Angelia Austin. Austin Taylor Everett. Anthony Joseph Ukar. Michelle Gall Bacar. Ashley Rhodes Balzano. Robert Joseph Baranello. Sean Christian Bear. Lauren LaJean Bell. Stephanie Janine Berry. Isabel Margaret Borsma. Ashley Lauren Buchheimer. Kama Victoria Booth. Danielle Uleda Brandon. Anna Mazze Brownstein. Lauren Ashley Bruns, cum laude. John James Bunting III. Laisha Janae Burgess. Michael J. Burke, also meets requirements for the secondary education cognate. Danielle Nicole Burkhart. John Martin Capel, cum laude. Also meets requirements for the Honors College. Emily Childs Cavell, Jeffrey Lynn Chilcoat II, Sally Elizabeth Clark, cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College, Catherine Scotto Conforti, Alexa Grace Korn, Lauren Elizabeth Costello, also meets requirements for Anthropology and the Honors College, Joseph Daniel Cox, Alexa Marie Datko, cum laude, Chelsea Aaron Davis. Carolyn Marie Dawson, cum laude. Rachel Ann Durango. Sony Jatendra Desaya. <laughs> Kenneth James Devani. 
Samuel Lee Dickey. Siobhan Marie Drum, magna cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Garrett Michael Egan. Stephen Susan Eldridge. Stephanie Susan Eldridge. Catherine Elizabeth Ely. Caitlin Marie Ellis, cum laude. Taylor Michelle Irwin. Aaron Siobhan Fannin, cum laude, also meets requirements for Spanish. Dodson Hill Felton III, cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Kimberly Michelle Fender, summa cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Stephanie Joy Hutalia Fiesta, cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. William Brandon Finch, Erica Brittany Flores, Allison Nicole Ford, cum laude. Mary Catherine Ford, Oliver Reed Fowler, Reagan Angel Friedel, cum laude, Brittany Michelle Gary, Alexandra Victoria Giorgetti, Grace Claire Rainey Gilliam, David James Gregory, Brittany Ann Gubash, Jonathan Shelton Stevens Haig. James Bradley Helton. Stephen Elliott Hayward. Alexander T. Huang. J. Michael Horn. Courtney. Ruslan, Rutland Hornilla, Jonathan Ellen Hornsley, Bion Alexander Howard, Emery Elizabeth Owl, Addie Sims Hudson, Paul Daniel Inhabitant, Julie Helene Jacobson, Megan Brooklyn Jenkins, Summer Nicole Jones, Magna Cum Laude, Sarah Gabrielle Joseph, Rima Ahmed Kashif, Cum Laude, Anne Gregory Kelly, Stephen Mitchell Kent, Elizabeth Jane Kopek, Helene K. Larson, Helena K. Larson. Elise Ann Magian Calda, Swati Majahin, cum laude, Taylor Elise McEnany, summa cum laude, Evan P. Patrice McDonald, Brian Joseph Miljekovic, Caitlin Christian Morrissey. Marguerite Harvis, Timothy Donald Hanna, That's right. Michelle Lynn Harrison, Margie Yvonne Hayselden, Elizabeth Krista Obert, cum laude, Elaine Ray O'Donnell, cum laude. Caitlin Brooks Ogburn, magna cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Marissa Lee Polini. Krishnakumar Patel. Thomas Payne Peltier. Courtney Jean Peterson. Koti Ryan Phillips, cum laude. 
Elizabeth Bess Rigby Pierce. Melissa May Potter. Heather Lee Pregen, cum laude. Teresa Ann Pringle, also meets requirements for secondary education cognate. Ashley Elizabeth Raines. Lauren Ashley Ramsey, cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Allison Deborah Rice, magna cum laude. Jonathan Paul Richardson. Megan Milan Riggin. Jeffrey K. Riley, cum laude. Brentley Michael Roberts. Dana Lee Robinson. Jamie Noel Rodriguez. Christopher Nicholas Rodriguez. Vanessa Roos. Chelsea Ann Rudd. Anita Michelle Samuel. Stacy Jean Tangtian, cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Caitlin Siobhan Savage, cum laude. Richard Sims Tompkins. Suzanne Ellis Schmidt, Megan Elizabeth Scott, Joseph Secor Taddy, Patricia Joanne Shanto, cum laude, Joshua Seth Shinoff, Rebecca Blanks Simpson, Vanessa Renee Skinner, Tralacia Janae Smiley, also meets requirements for secondary education cognate. Andrea Lee Smith, cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Jacob Louise Sperling. Audra R. Stanley. Elizabeth Stanyon Stevens. Melissa Ann Strickland. Andrew Charles Steubenroth. Andrew Michael Stuffelbeam. Margaret Ann Summers, cum laude. Amanda Joy Zwark, cum laude. Also meets requirements for secondary education cognate. Nancy T Lucy Tolliver. William Charles Taylor. Richard Sims Tompkins. Gabriel Stephan Turner, also meets requirements for the secondary education cognate. Carrie Marie Umberger, magna cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Holly Brooke Usher. Megan Elizabeth Valentine. Margaret Ann Veith. Taylor Nicole Watson. Michael Weingarten. Mary Carmina Wilburn, Tiffany Charnay Williams, Rebecca Louise Wilson, magna cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in biochemistry, joining us will be Professor Rick Heldrick, interim chair of the department. Graduates receiving a degree in biochemistry also meet requirements for a degree in chemistry. Kimberly Ann Castleberry, Karen Lynn Collier, Richard Franklin Comer, Edward Lawrence Cook, Carrie Cooper, Jasper Leland Cumby, summa cum laude. Kyle Aaron Darty, Angel Michelle Dotson, Stephen Lee Holishauser, Allison Michelle Kendra, Cum laude, also meets requirements for Studio Art and the Honors College. Dil Devendra Patel, Cum laude, also meets requirements for the College College. 
Sumitra Patel. Ah, Sumitra Pati. Rebecca Laura Patton, cum laude. Jana Antonina Rivetti, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Amanda Watson Raymond, cum laude. Christopher Logan Riley. David Forrest Theaker, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Spencer Willis Todd. Svetlana Lubomirovo Uzonovo. Anna Catherine Wyland. Ya Yang Zheng. For the bachelor's degree in chemistry. Jillian Nicole Amick. Ashton, Ashton Nicole Bartley. Andrea Lee DeSantis. Cum laude, also meets requirements for political science and the Honors College. Sarah Catherine Gilreath. Brandy Maliko Hudson. Sarah Lindley Gerald. Shabri Lee Nick. Christopher Wayne Marvin. Stephen J. Myers. Allison Hope Payne. Rainey Elizabeth Patterson, cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Kristen Page Spinney. Megan Nicole Spradlin. Jeremy Mark Yatvin. Akal Sagu Zaleka, cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Brandon Stephen Zellner. For the bachelor's degree in computer information systems, joining us will be Professor Christopher Starr, chair of the department. Austin Tyler Baker. Stacy Lee Torrey, cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in computer science. Carlin Elizabeth Carter. Stephen Dix, summa cum laude. William David Epperson, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Alex Elizabeth Johnson, magna cum laude. Brittany Itelia Johnson. Walter Price McGuire. Stephen Cody Nelson, cum laude, also meets requirements for music. Bryce Christopher Sepulveda. Brandon Joshua Shepard, magna cum laude. Jesse Ryan Snyder. Perry Anthony Spiropoulos, magna cum laude. Robert Clark Strickland, magna cum laude. For the bachelor's degree in geology, joining us will be Professor Mitchell Colgan, Chair of the Department. Madeline Renee Adams. Catherine Anna Baratini. Carolyn Adams Roderick. Philip Anderson DeGrice. Cody John Danofrio. Kyle William Ford. Christopher Lee Ginn, cum laude. Joshua Tate Graham, Kyle Thomas Gray, Kyle Franklin Harbin, Lindsay Elise Hazelwood, cum laude, Chelsea Austin Height, John Andrew Hildreth, Ross David Holbrook, cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College, Lauren Neela Holder, Patrick Robert Jones, Harris Charles Pantlick. Jeffrey Paul Schwindeman, magna cum laude. Allison Claire Stone. Mitchell James Warnick. Frank Earl Waters, cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Delphine Lynn Woodman. For the bachelor's degree in marine biology, joining us will be Professor Yap Helenis, chair of the department. Elizabeth Ann Ahern, magna cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. Tamara Lynn Arndt. Sarah Catherine Bradley. Ashley 
Marita Brott. Everett Martin Klossner. Kirkpatrick James Gillian. Kathleen Cook Hollowell. Kristen Marlene J. Cassidy J. Keener. Kelly Marie Kroll, cum laude. Jessica Olivia Lewis. Ryan Christopher Margette. Alyssa Nicole Miller. Crystal Miner. Casey Brooke Mixon. Tyler Alden Peacock. Megan Mariah Saylor. Henry Bigelow Ward. Robert Palmer Wolfram. For the bachelor's degree in mathematics, joining us will be Professor Robert Mignon, chair of the department. Thomas Adam Blakely. Tommy Garrett Campbell III, also meets requirements for secondary education cognate. Darby Hannah Kareens. Madison Lynn Homan, summa cum laude, also meets requirements for chemistry. Brittany Morgan Hauser, also meets requirements for biology. Danielle Lynn Ireton, also meets requirements for secondary education cognate. Kristen Michelle Jenkins, summa cum laude. Jessica Ray King, magnum cum laude. Sarah Grace Overstreet. Catherine Ann Peterson. Jacques Allen Roberts. Connor Declain Roderick. For the bachelor's degree in physics, joining us will be Professor John Halika, chair of the department. Michelle Renee Anderson. Reginald Demetrius Coleman, also meets requirements for chemistry. Philip Matthew Meyer, Jr. Cameron Kent Self. Andrew Gerald Smith, also meets requirements for mathematics. Connor Joseph Smith. Alexander Gerard Verderber, magna cum laude, also meets requirements for the Honors College. I forgot to ask about his tailor. Will the candidates for the bachelor's degrees please rise? By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and on recommendation of the faculty and the deans, of the College of Charleston. I hereby confer upon each of you the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science as earned with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. I would now like the faculty of the college to stand. They deserve the credit for the quality, the success, the reputation, and the student-focused culture that we've got here at the college.
Thank you. Please be seated. I know that you got to this point mostly uh, on your own, but credit should also go to your families and your friends. The support system that they provide is critical to education. I would like the parents, the grandparents, the spouses, other family and friends of the graduates to please stand so our students and our faculty and our administration and I can thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Graduates, we are delighted with the value you have added to the College of Charleston during your time with us. We have truly learned from each other. I offer you congratulations on a job well done. Ladies and gentlemen, the College of Charleston class of 2011. Would you please stand for the alma mater? We'll be led by Michael Johnson. The words can be found on the back cover of your program. Please be seated. Michael, thank you. Family and friends, would you please remain in place until the recessional is complete? And graduates, in order to avoid congestion around Porter's Lodge, would you please continue the procession on down Glebe Street and meet your family and friends there? <laughs> 